Welcome to the last lecture of the course. Uh, first, congratulations for making it this far. We are almost done, just one more lecture to go, uh, and then uh, it will be the end of the, of the course. So in lecture 10, we will be looking at body tissues. Uh, this is a nice transition to the next uh, course you'll be taking in second semester, the pre-anatomy and physiology, where you'll be learning about body functions and organs and, and all that stuff. So uh, let's get started. First of all, we have so many different kinds of cells in the body, but they have all came from uh, the zygote, which is uh, something that you get when the sperm fertilizes the egg. Uh, and from then on, we uh, uh, keep on dividing, and that's how we get to all the different cell types in the body. Uh, sometime during development, uh, we rely on something called the stem cells, uh, which are cells that can give rise to specialized cell type in the body. So when we were still um, in embryonic development, we have what's called embryonic stem cells. These are the most versatile type of stem cells. They can literally become any cell type in the body uh, under the right stimulation. So they can become brain cells, they can become heart cells, skin cell, liver cells, what have you. Uh, after birth, uh, we no longer have embryonic stem cells, but we still would have uh, some stem cells uh, in the body, uh, and these are less versatile. They are more committed to a particular category of cell type. So you would have uh, uh, stem cells in the bone marrow that will be allowed to become different uh, types of blood cells, okay? and you would have stem cells in your GI tract that would become uh, cells uh, related to the digestive tract. Okay, so they, they still can become a uh, different cell type, but within a certain category. The uh, uh, property of stem cells uh, is uh, quite uh, unique in that not only are they able to do a mitosis to create more uh, copies of stem cells, uh, but they are also able to differentiate uh, and uh, become the different cell type. Uh, uh, and, and so um, that's unique uh, compared to the regular somatic cells uh, that we have in the body. In the beginning of the course, we talked about the levels of organization. In fact, we have some of the earlier lectures talking about uh, the atoms coming together to form molecules and macromolecules. We then move on and talk about various cellular uh, machineries. Um, but now we are going to have to uh, move another level higher uh, into the tissue level, organs, uh, and uh, as well as the organ system level. So uh, most animals have four types of tissues organized as organs and organ system. Tissues are basically a group of specialized cells organized to perform a specific function. So an example of that would be like fat cells, uh, fat, fat tissue rather uh, for storing energy, uh, muscle tissue for producing contractions. Uh, an organ would be a specialized structure that is composed of different types of tissues um, that allows you to perform a specific function. So uh, in, uh, in the stomach, you would have um, connective tissues, you would have uh, a muscle tissue that forms the organ, uh, and different organs are going to consist of different types of tissues. And when you put multiple organs together, that's when you have an organ system, so such as the circulatory system is going to have multiple organs working together to perform a specific specialized function. Here are all the organ systems that exist with the, within the body, uh, and you will be learning uh, about all these systems in, in much more detail uh, in the next semester. But for now, let me give you an overview of what um, the major um, organs and structures are involved in each of the uh, uh, our organ system, uh, and you can find this in your course pack um, or workbook study guides um, that um, that is on eCentennial. So here we have the cardiovascular system. Uh, the main function of the cardiovascular system is to uh, circulate blood uh, and to uh, uh, distribute oxygen uh, within the body. Uh, and so uh, the main organs uh, in the uh, circulatory system. Uh, cardiovascular system is the heart, uh, and there, there is the heart, uh, and the heart will be responsible for distributing blood uh, throughout the body. Um, and you can see, um, in order to transport the blood throughout the body, um, you can, uh, you will have blood vessels that will uh, do that for you. So um, the blood vessels comes in two major forms. Uh, you have the arteries, right? That's the uh, kind of hollow colored here. Uh, the white one here, I'm not going to color all of it, um, and the arteries are going to be responsible for carrying blood away from the body, uh, from the heart rather, uh, and you are going to have the blue ones as well, 
okay, uh, which are the veins, which will help uh, return blood um, to your heart. Okay, so two types of uh, blood vessels uh, right there. You don't really have to write down these things. You can just kind of listen to me uh, describe them. It just gives you a brief overview of what the uh, 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 structure does. The next one is the respiratory system. Okay, so the respiratory system, uh, we have the nasal cavity, which is where you will be able to breathe in the air. Uh, you will add a little bit of moisture to the air. You will warm it up a little bit, uh, and the um, uh, air is going to travel to your windpipe, uh, also known as the trachea, which will lead down all the way um, to a, a branching point, uh, and that will then carry the air into your lungs. So you have two lungs. Um, the one on the left side, the, on the right side rather, um, it's mirror image because we're looking at it from the front. The ones on the right side will have three lobes and the one on the left side will have two lobes. And the lungs is where gas exchange is going to take place. Uh, here we have the nervous system. Uh, for the nervous system, we have the brain up here, which is the command center of the body. It will tell um, you, your body what to do, uh, allow you to uh, have uh, um, complicated thoughts, uh, voluntary control uh, over your uh, 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 muscles, for example. Um, there's going to be the spinal cord right here. Um, spinal cord allows your brain to communicate with the rest of the body. It also allows you to receive uh, sens sensory information uh, from the body, um, and those will be carried up uh, to your brain. For example, if you touch something hot in the hand, um, that information will be carried by the nerves, uh, which would then go to the spinal cord, and then from there it would go up um, to the brain. So all these uh, uh, lines that are coming off from the spinal cord, um, those, are, those are your nerves. I'm just going to leave them as black. Uh, next, we have the urinary system, which is the system that will uh, help filter the blood and uh, produce urine as a, as a byproduct. Um, so there would be your kidneys. You have two kidneys. The one on the uh, left side is a little bit higher than the one on the right. Um, the um, uh, uh, urine is going to drain through these uh, ureters. Um, as they're being produced uh, and you will store them in the urinary bladder uh, before um, you will expel them out of your body. Uh, we have the digestive system. Uh, in the digestive system we have the uh, oral cavity. Oral cavity is basically the mouth. That's where you will put the food uh, in. Let me try to make this a little bit smaller. There's where you put the mouth, uh, put the food in, in the mouth. And there's the esophagus which carries the food down um, to your stomach. Your stomach is where you will have uh, chemical digestion of the food uh, and you will um, take them to the intestine. So there is the first part of the intestine called a duodenum uh, and you have uh, the other two parts uh, of the small intestine, the ileum and the jejunum. Um, in the first part you will digest the food uh, completely and then in the last two parts of the small intestine, you will absorb those nutrients. Uh, reproductive organs, right? We, we talked about gonads already. So there are the ovaries in female, uh, and female, uh, and then there is the uterus. Um, that's where the baby uh, is going to grow. Um, and then for the male reproductive system, which I don't have a picture here, uh, but there would have been the testicles, right? Uh, 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 lower down uh, there. So that's an overview of all the... Um, uh, uh, key uh, body system uh, uh, and, uh, and various organs associated with it. Like I said, it's just a preview. Um, I, I won't be testing you uh, on these things um, in the uh, in the final exam. Um, it's just a, a, a kind of like an overview um, to kind of prep you um, into uh, what what you will be learning next semester. Many internal organs uh, are going to be found inside body cavities, uh, and um, uh, you can see over here, um, there's the cranial cavity, that's where your brain is going to be. Um, there is the vertebral canal, that's where your spinal cord will be. Uh, and then here in the chest, uh, that's the thoracic cavity. Uh, in the thoracic cavity, you will find things like your heart uh, or your lungs. Uh, and then down here is your abdominal cavity. That's where you will find uh, 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 stomach, uh, your intestine, 
uh, and, uh, uh, and your kidneys, for example. Uh, and the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity will be separated by uh, this uh, muscular sheet called the diaphragm. And diaphragm is something that will help you uh, breathe. So that's basically what is um, written down here. And you can take a look at that uh, on your own. Now we're going to talk about something called anatomical terms. Uh, this here is called the anatomical position. If you stand like this uh, with your palm facing forward uh, and your toes pointing forward. Uh, and in the an anatomical position, we can refer to body parts uh, using anatomical terms. Um, so the best way for me to do this is, uh, again, go to your uh, study guide and you can find this page uh, and we will, uh, we will do this together. Okay, so here we can see uh, the man is standing in the anatomical position. So here we're going to put anatomical, anatomical position. Okay, so it just uh, gives everybody uh, like a standard position um, to refer body parts uh, uh, to. Uh, and when you're in the anatomical position, uh, things that are on top, right, on higher up, we call that superior. Superior. Okay. And on the other hand, things that are lower down, we call that inferior. Inferior. So superior, your head is superior to your uh, the trunk of your body. Uh, your uh, feet are going to be inferior to the knees. Now, when we refer to... Uh, actually, let's go over here for a second. Uh, if you look at it from the side, same thing. Things are on the top. Superior. And you can see it's the same alphabet, so that means it's the same answer. And at the bottom, that is inferior. Okay. Next, we are going to look at a limb. Okay. So either your entire arm or your, ent your entire leg. Um, if there is a structure that's closer to the joint of the limb. Okay. So for the for the uh, uh, arm, it will be the shoulder. Uh, for the leg, it will be the hip. If it's closer to the joint, right, we would say it is proximal. Proximal. Okay. So your uh, elbow is going to be proximal to your wrist because it's closer to the joint, right? Uh, and if it's farther away from the joint, we say distal. So you can see these terms are actually used in pairs, right? Superior and inferior is one pair. Proximal and distal would be um, another pair. Uh, for the leg, same thing. If it's closer to the hip, we say proximal. Okay, so your hip is proximal to your knees and your knees will be proximal to your uh, feet, okay, and then your your feet would be farther away from the hip, so that's going to be distal, distal, okay. Uh, things that are in front, we say anterior. Okay? Things that are going to be in front, we say uh, anterior. Well, let me use a different color, anterior. Okay, so your nose would be anterior to your ear. It's in front of it, right? Okay, and the opposite of inferior uh, of anterior is posterior. Posterior. We can actually use a different term as well. Okay, another way to say anterior is ventral. Ventral. Okay, so we sometimes use ventral to describe things in the um, organization of the spinal cord, and uh, for things that are at the back, we say dorsal. Dorsal, like that. Okay, so ventral dorsal. Now if we draw a line, uh, an imaginary line down the middle of the person, okay, this is called the midline, midline, okay, and things that are farther away from the midline, we will say that they are uh, lateral, lateral, okay, so your eyes would be lateral to the nose. It's farther away from the middle line than the nose it is. Uh, then, and the nose would be medial right, to the ears because the nose is right on the midline, right? So nose are medial to the ears. The mouth is medial to the eyes, okay? The nipples are medial to the shoulder. Your shoulders would be lateral to the, uh, to the mouth. Okay, so things that are farther away from the midline, lateral, closer to the midline, medial. So those are the anatomical terms. Uh, we can also say that um, if things are on the same side uh, of the body, then we would use the term 
uh, uh, ipsy lateral we'll right here ipsy lateral okay so like uh, this point here and this point would be ipsy lateral on the same side of the body okay uh, and if it's on the opposite side of the body okay we will say contra contralateral okay so like uh, this point here on the body this point on the body is going to be contralateral to this point on the body okay so ipsy lateral same side contralateral opposite side uh, and I think there's one more that we have talked about is not on the picture but sometimes you would have things that have multiple layers right so like if you think about if you think about your brain right so this is the brain this is the brain okay this is the brain brain okay and then outside of the brain uh, it is going to be protected by the uh, the skull right Okay, so I can't really draw the whole skull, but this is where the skull would be. This is the skull that protects your brain. Okay, the bones, right? Okay, so skull. Uh, hold on a second. Skull. Okay. So if it's if it's uh, closer to the surface of the body, we say superficial. Okay. If it's deeper into the body, right? away from the surface we say deep okay so superficial versus deep the skull is superficial to the brain and the brain is deep to the skull so those are all the anatomical terms uh, and uh, we can do some practice here in the uh, in the PowerPoint let's go back to the PowerPoint uh, slides and we'll try a few examples uh, you can try these four first pause the video and then uh, check it afterwards so here we go the hands are superior to the feet uh, the knees are inferior below right below the waist uh, the elbow is superior to the waist well wrist rather sorry um, so some of you might be thinking right uh, can we also say the elbow is proximal to the to the wrist yeah you can of course right but here we're just using superior and inferior there are usually more than one correct answers um, in these type of questions uh, but if they only give you two choices then superior is the correct one uh, the calf muscle is superior to your ankle okay next page so this is anterior versus posterior again try them out first the heel is posterior to the toes the biceps are anterior to the triceps. If you don't know where the biceps and triceps are, you can uh, Google that. Uh, it's basically the uh, one is in front uh, in your upper arm and one is um, uh, at the back on the, on the upper arm. The hamstring is going to be uh, posterior to your quadriceps. Okay, so quadriceps is basically like um, your, uh, the front of your thighs and the hamstring is at the back. Okay, same thing, medial and lateral for examples. Try it out first. The arms are lateral to the midline. The neck is medial to the arms. The shoulders are lateral to the midline. And the ears are lateral to the nose. The fingers are distal to the elbow because it's farther away from the joint. The knees are proximal to the feet. The wrists are proximal to the fingers. So hopefully you have a better understanding of the anatomical terms. And now we are going to look at something called uh, planes and sections. And again, I'm gonna go back to the uh, uh, study guide here. Okay, so if you were to cut the body with uh, imaginary planes, uh, e depending on how you cut, uh, the planes would be uh, different names. Okay, so here we can have uh, what's called a transverse plane. Okay, so this plane that I'm coloring right now, B, that is a plane that will divide the body into top and bottom. Right, so this is transverse plane. 
transverse plane. It will divide the body into superior part on top and inferior. Okay, so it divide into up and down. Uh, you can have another plane here. This one is going to be uh, frontal or coronal. Both is okay. This one divides the body into uh, front and back. Front and back. Or in anatomical terms, it would divide the body into anterior and posterior portion. This is the frontal or or coronal plane. Last but not least, we have the um, this one called the sagittal plane, which will divide the body into uh, left and right, left and right. Okay, so this one is the sagittal. Sagittal plane. And that's all the planes um, in the body. Uh, just one additional note the sagittal plane, if you cut right down the mid line, then we call it the mid sagittal plane. Okay, so if you have the uh, uh, person here, okay, so if you cut this way, right, that's sagittal. Uh, this one is sagittal, but if you go down along the middle, right down the middle, and this one is mid sagittal. So over here, uh, that's another uh, view. Exactly what I um, what we labeled. Uh, this would be uh, a, a mid sagittal uh, 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 session, right? You can see cut right down the middle, and you can see the brain here, uh, and and the nose and the tongue and all that stuff. Uh, this would be uh, um, a frontal section. If you cut it, uh, uh, cut the legs. Um, uh, into uh, for anterior and posterior section, uh, and this is a transverse section of the abdomen. Now we're gonna talk about uh, different types of epithelial tissues. So general characteristics of uh, epithelial tissues or epithelium is that there will be one free surface that face either the outside environment uh, or some internal body fluid. Okay, uh, this side is called the apical side. Right? So if you um, take a look at the uh, small intestine here, for example, the apical side would be the side that is uh, pointing in um, the the side where the food is going to be. Right? It's going to be pointing uh, on the uh, on the inside of the intestine. Okay, and then the other side of the epithelium uh, is going to be uh, attached to a, a non-cellular layer. Uh, uh, that, that means it's a layer that's not made up of cell, uh, and we call that the basement membrane. Okay? So the basement membrane uh, serves as an anchorage point uh, for these epithelium. Epithelial tissues are classified according to uh, the shape of the cells, uh, as well as the number of layers you have. Uh, if it's one layer, we use the word simple. Uh, epithelial tissue, uh, and if it has multiple layers, uh, then we would say stratified epithelial, which means that there are two or more layers. Uh, and in terms of cell shapes, uh, we can have uh, three different shapes, uh, squamous, which means they are kind of flat uh, with the nucleus in the middle, so kind of like a sunny side up egg. Uh, and we can have a cuboidal, and as the name suggests, it's going to look like a little cube right, with the nucleus there. And columna would be more of a rectangular shape. Okay, So uh, we can have simple squamous, for example. That would mean it's a single layer of flattened cells. Here is a simple squamous epithelium. Again, it's a single layer of flat cells, and these are ideal uh, for locations where uh, there will be uh, filtration, diffusion, or osmosis, um, because by having a single layer, it makes things, um, allows things to cross them uh, uh, easily. So an example uh, of this would be uh, the air sacs in the lungs, where you are gonna be able to uh, perform gas exchange. Um, so here you can see that's the basement membrane, the part that's going to be attaching uh, to um, to anchoring the cells to the body. Uh, and then you have the free surface. And in the case of the air sac, this is the part that will be exposed to the air. Okay, so this is single layer, flat cells, 
simple squamous. Okay, you don't have to like memorize uh, all of these uh, uh, examples, right? Just know one example of each type, uh, then you're going to be okay. And also, you should be able to identify them uh, uh, in a picture. Uh, next, we have stratify uh, squamous epithelium. Uh, these are uh, multiple layers of uh, uh, flat flattened cells. Uh, that's what they look like uh, uh, under the microscope. Uh, this is just a cartoon drawing of them. So you would want to have um, multiple layers of these flat cells in locations where there are a lot of um, uh, uh, wear and tear or abrasion. Okay, so uh, you will find them in the mouth. You'll find them in the esophagus um, because you know we, we keep on putting things in the mouth. When we chew, there's a lot of rubbing going on in the mouth, uh, and so we want to protect them from wear and tear. Uh, and that's why having stratified squamous epithelium uh, is good. Uh, and there are some stratified squamous that are keratinized, um, so they they have some keratin in it, uh, and that forms a barrier that prevents water from sipping through. Um, so something like uh, the skin um, would be an example of, of that. Next, we have simple cuboidal epithelium. These are a single layer of cube-shaped cells, uh, and typically you will find them in uh, in ducts of many glands. A duct is something that would carry some kind of fluid uh, secretion to um, to to the surface of the body or to another parts of the body. Um, so you would have ducts uh, in, say, um, the uh, the the sweat glands. You would have ducts uh, that carry secretion from your pancreas, and so on and so forth. Uh, and lining the surrounding of those ducts would be a single layer of of cuboidal uh, cells, um, and they are good for secretion or absorption. Okay, you will find them uh, also in uh, uh, kidneys, uh, as well as uh, covering the surface of the ovaries. Uh, next one is simple columna epithelium, uh, and these are a single layer of rectangular uh, cell cells. Um, they are also uh, going to be responsible for secretion and absorption, uh, but there is a bit of a protection uh, function as well because they are a little bit bigger than the cuboidal cells, uh, and you will find them in your GI tracts uh, as well as the ducts of many glands as well uh, because, again, there is that uh, secretion component um, to it. Uh, and then we have something called pseudostratified ciliated columna epithelium. Um, these are a cell that looks like it's multiple layer, but they are not. Pseudo means fake. Okay, so it appears to be stratified, but it's not. Uh, and they have hairs on them, uh, the cilia on them, uh, and you will find them uh, in um, uh, uh, your airway, for example, uh, as well as in the reproductive tracks okay so you can see uh, it looks like there are multiple layers of nuclei but when you trace out the outline of the cell uh, all of them will uh, actually make contact with the basement membrane uh, and then there are some specialized epithelium, uh, uh, some with uh, cilia, some with microvilli, uh, and, and again, the cilia, uh, you will find them in, in, in lung cells, uh, you will find them in the oviducts to help guide the uh, movement of the ducts, uh, and in the uh, kidneys and the small intestine, you have these cells with uh, uh, foldings called microvilli uh, that would increase the absorption uh, surface area. So I gave you a lot of examples and I did it in a relatively quick manner. Um, so uh, you might feel a little bit overwhelmed, but bottom line is this, right? Like, um, are you able to identify them uh, on the uh, on the test, right? Uh, and are you able to uh, uh, provide one specific ex example of, of their function? Uh, uh, and if you're able to do that, then, then you're okay for the test. So here we have uh, the simple squamous uh, and simple squamous you would uh, use them for locations uh, where there will be diffusion uh, or osmosis taking place, uh, such as the uh, uh, air sacs in the lungs. Uh, over here, right, uh, you try to take a look at the shape. It looks like uh, they are cube shape, uh, and there's only one single layer, so that is going to be cuboidal, simple cuboidal. Uh, and they would uh, be responsible for secretion and absorption, uh, and they usually would be surrounding uh, some kind of duct. Uh, over here, we have uh, stratified uh, multiple layers of squamous cell, uh, and you will find these in the mouth, uh, in, the, uh, in the esophagus, uh, maybe in the anus, uh, where there could potentially be uh, a lot of abrasion, wear and tear, uh, so you want to have the protection that you need um, to prevent uh, tissue damage. Uh, these are ciliated columnar cells, you will find them in airways, 
and over here we have the uh, regular simple columna okay, which uh, offers protection secretion as well as absorption so you'll find them in the GI tract for example as well as some ducts okay, so go through that a couple more times yourself um, and uh, you should be you should be okay next we're going to talk about the different types of connective tissues Connective tissues are basically, you can think of it as like filler stuff and, and glue that binds everything together uh, in the body. Um, so they uh, provide support and protection, they fill up space, uh, and they also produce uh, blood cells and store fat. There are uh, six different types of connective tissues that we're going to look at, uh, and they would have the living cells in it, uh, and the cells are usually separated by non-living extracellular matrix composed of organic uh, ground substances. Okay, so organic means it contains carbon, right? As we mentioned um, all the way back in lecture two, uh, and and some of these uh, uh, fibers that you found in the matrix will um, uh, affect the uh, 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 consistency of the uh, of the uh, type of connective tissue you have. Uh, sometimes you will have solid, sometimes you have semi-fluid, uh, and sometimes it's completely fluid, as in the case of blood. So we have uh, uh, two categories. Um, we have what's called soft uh, connective tissues. Uh, these are the things that are tape, taping various uh, structures together. Uh, and then we have the specialized connective tissues, uh, 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 which include cartilage, bones, uh, adipose, which is fat tissue, and, and blood. In loose connective tissue, uh, these things, uh, as you can tell from the picture, they are not very compact. Uh, they have a relatively a low density, um, and they are commonly found between other tissues as well as between organs. Okay? They help bind, uh, bind the organs and the tissues together. Uh, it's kind of like a loose uh, uh, type of um, uh, 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 fibers uh, uh, that appears to have uh, like a spider web appearance uh, in them. Okay, uh, so all these fibers are part of the matrix, uh, and then you would have the cells that are loosely uh, scattered throughout this matrix. Uh, the opposite of that would be the dense uh, uh, connective tissues. And in dense connective tissue, there are the dense irregular ones, which are kind of uh, scattered uh, uh, all um, uh, in, in seemingly random directions uh, as opposed to the uh, dense regular connective tissue uh, which are more organized into parallel uh, fibers. You will typically find dense irregular connective tissues uh, in the deeper layers of the skin. Uh, they kind of serve as a little bit of a padding uh, whereas for dense regular connective tissues, uh, the ones with the uh, very organized parallel fibers, you will find them in uh, ligaments and tendons. Uh, and in case you um, do not know, the tendon is uh, what connects a muscle to bone, uh, and whereas uh, uh, a ligament is uh, something that would connect uh, two bones together, okay, such as uh, uh, the ligaments in the wrist area, as well as ligaments uh, in, the, um, in the joints of the, of the fingers. Now we're going to talk about a specialized type of connective tissues, um, and the first one is cartilage. Um, there are three different types of cartilage. They're called elastic cartilage, fibrous cartilage, and uh, haline uh, cartilage. Uh, the elastic cartilage are the ones that you will find in um, uh, structures like ear, like your nose, uh, and that's what they look like under the microscope. Um, these are the individual uh, cells uh, uh, called the chondrocytes that you will find in uh, cartilage. Uh, cartilage are not bones. Right? They, um, they, they are basically uh, something that would form your skeleton when you're in embryonic development and most cartilage will be replaced by bones uh, uh, at birth. Um, but there are some cartilage that remains in the body uh, and the ones in your ear, in your nose, uh, that's elastic cartilage. They gives a little bit of flexibility uh, and elasticity to those structures. If you bend your ears, it's going to pop back to the normal shape uh, when you let go and that's because of the elastic cartilage. There's not a lot of blood vessels in the elastic cartilage so if you damage your uh, ear or, or a nose, uh, it, like you break your nose or broke your nose or something, uh, it's going to take a long time to, uh, to recover from. Uh, there's fibrous cartilage, that's something you will find in say 
uh, uh, in between your backbone, okay, there is a disc there uh, called the intervertebral disc, uh, and that prevents uh, wear and tear when you uh, bend forward, backwards, uh, and sometimes uh, when you get older, it's possible for this uh, uh, disc to uh, become uh, too thin, or sometimes it slips out. Um, then you could cause um, the backbone to be crushing on uh, your, your your spinal nerves, uh, and that could create numbness or tingly feelings uh, in uh, in say your lower extremities. We have the hayline uh, cartilage, uh, and you will find that uh, in your airway, for example, uh, and that will help uh, uh, kind of support the airway and prevent it from uh, from collapsing. So three types of cartilage. Uh, we have adipose tissue, which is basically fat tissue, um, and they uh, look like this uh, under the microscope. Um, all these empty spaces are basically where you store the fat. Uh, you will find uh, fat in various locations in the body, uh, around organ structure, uh, around most organs, uh, in the um, uh, 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 beneath the skin, uh, and uh, here um, yeah, you will find them in the breast tissue as well. Uh, there's bone tissue, and uh, that's what they look like under the microscope. Uh, this is a thin slice of uh, what we call. Uh, 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 um, compact bone and um, it kind of resembles like a tree trunk right uh, with all the rings and and, and, uh, and, and circles uh, and of course bones is important for uh, support of the body uh, but bones also allows you to store minerals such as calcium uh, and uh, your red cells uh, white cells and, and blood cells in general actually all came from uh, uh, the uh, the bone um, so you will you will learn more about that in the next semester uh, and then there is blood. Um, blood consists of the uh, liquid portion, which is called the plasma, uh, and it's supposed to be yellowish, uh, uh, clear fluid. Um, and you'll be able to see that when you separate blood uh, by spinning it at really, really a high speed. Uh, and then there is the cellular components. Um, there are three types of cells. Uh, the red cells, which are important for transporting oxygen. Uh, we have the white cells that help defend the body against uh, pathogens, uh, which are things like bacteria, viruses, fungus, things that can cause you to become sick. Um, we have platelets, which will help stop the bleeding uh, if you have a cut. Okay, And the uh, uh, plasma is where um, you will have uh, dissolved uh, proteins, minerals, uh, water and gas, as well as some waste product. Uh, and so again, right? I went through that relatively quickly. Uh, this is just meant to be like a uh, an overview, right? Um, a bridge lesson between this course and the next one. Um, so a lot of these details you will learn in the next semester. Uh, but again, you should be able to identify uh, some of the pictures, right? Um, so this one is easy, right? You 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 remember the rings and the circles. Um, this would be this would be the bone. Um, this one is also easy. Uh, it has a lot of empty space in it. Uh, this is the adipose tissue, the fat tissue. Um, this is blood. Uh, and the one that looks like uh, little glass uh, circles, this is the cartilage. Uh, you don't have to know which type of cartilage it is. Um, there are three types, right? Um, you just have to know this cartilage. Um, and these two are the uh, uh, connective tissue. Okay, so you have the ones that are kind of uh, not very uh, compact. So this is the loose connective tissue. Loose connective tissue. And that means this one is the dense connective tissue. Okay. Uh, and if you're really good, you will know that this one is the regular dense connective tissue because the fibers are uh, kind of organized into parallel strands. So just a few more slides. Uh, we have muscles and neurons now. Those are the last uh, two types of tissues. Uh, um, so, so far we talk about connective tissues and there are the different uh, sh uh, shapes and number of layers. Uh, we talk about connective tissues, there are seven, uh, seven types. Uh, uh, and then we have the uh, muscle tissue now. Okay, so in muscle, uh, we have um, uh, uh, basically uh, three different types. We have skeletal muscle, uh, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscles, and they all have different uh, characteristics that allows them to perform their function. Uh, but typically, muscle is responsible for shortening, creating uh, contractions that will allow you to uh, pull on something, and that pulling creates body movements. So smooth muscles are muscles um, that we do not have voluntary control over. Um, so these would be muscles that uh, are part of your GI tract. We cannot control uh, when to push the foot forward, for example, 
uh, uh, we cannot control how fast to push the foot forward, right? Uh, and uh, we will also have smooth muscles in blood vessels, right? We cannot control uh, the, the the size of our blood vessels. All these are done autonomically, right? Uh, through our nervous system, uh, and and those are made of our smooth muscles uh, because they appear to be having a smooth uh, 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 um, surface when you view them under the microscope. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, muscles that we have voluntary control over. Um, so anything that you can move at will, uh, that's going to be made up of uh, skeletal muscle. Uh, and they are going to have these uh, bands when you look at them under the microscope. Um, so we call them striations. Okay? Um, so smooth muscle is a no, no striation, non-striated, and involuntary. Uh, for skeletal muscle, they are striated, and it's voluntary. Uh, and for cardiac muscle, they are only found in the heart. Um, you don't have voluntary control over them, uh, and they are going to be striated as well. And uh, in addition, they will have these uh, what's called intercalated discs, um, which allows them to be all interconnected to each other. And that allows the heart muscle to contract in synchrony and create a forceful uh, contraction. So uh, just one more time, smooth muscle, non-striated, involuntary, skeletal muscles, voluntary and striated, uh, cardiac muscle, striated and involuntary. And the last type of tissue would be uh, nervous tissue. Uh, and uh, in nervous tissue, you will find neurons, uh, which basically allows you to uh, transmit signals. Um, and uh, that's uh, going to include signals that gives you your senses. So when you see things, your eyes have to transmit signals to your brain. Uh, that's carried by neurons. Uh, when you touch a hot surface and then your hand let go, right? all that involves a transmission of signal uh, by neurons. Uh, and um, uh, this is what a typical neuron look like. There is the uh, dendrites, which is responsible for receiving signal from another uh, cell. Uh, and then that signal will travel down the axon uh, to the axon terminal, where this will make connection uh, to an other neuron. Again, I, it's just an overview, so don't bother memorizing these parts uh, at this point. Uh, and that's it for the, uh, for the lecture, okay? Uh, um, uh, you should be able to describe the characteristics of various uh, body tissues uh, and give examples of body tissues in different organs. Um, and, and that's it for the course. Uh, thank you for watching uh, all the videos in the course. I, I hope you've watched all of them. <laughs> but I mean, if you only managed to watch some, uh, that's great as well. Um, so we will uh, talk again in the uh, tutorial. Thanks.